If you've got a short attention span, then I wouldn't bother with this video, turn over right now. If you're looking for some information about travelling to Verona, where to go, where to stay, then skip forward to whatever numbers flash on screen. If you're following my story, my letter to Juliet, stay tuned, because something very special happened. Right, it's 2017. Uh, the, the leader of the free world is Donald Trump. Uh, the United Kingdom is being ruled by an idiot and uh, we're on the doorstep of World War Three. But I've decided not to take part in any of that. Uh, my finances have been... Um, I've taken a severe hit because the government decided that I'm not actually disabled enough to get benefits so they're taking it all away. Um, however, after 20 years of fighting them, I've had enough. I'm just um, going to try and find work or create my own work. Um, I'm not going back on to benefits, uh, regardless. Uh, this has pr posed a problem to me, though, because um, uh, now that I've got no income, I've somehow got to find out how I'm going to get to Verona. However, having no income... Uh, was going to prove quite a severe problem for me to get to Verona. But long before all of this had happened, the goddesses of fate, Isa and Moira, were waving their knobbly fingers and getting involved without me noticing. See, I first wrote to Juliet back in February of 2014. 2015, I searched for um, the Ju Juliet Club on Facebook and I friended them. And I've got to know the secretaries of Juliet, uh, the permanent secretaries, uh, uh, Ellen Marchi, uh, and Tamike Diedrich, and um, uh, Giovanna Tamatia. I, I think I've pronounced that last name wrong, but anyway, it was Giovanna, that's for sure. Over the following months, um, uh, an artist called Giorgio Espin contacted me to become friends and uh, I didn't know anything about him, uh, he didn't speak any English, but his, de his designs and his um, art uh, was pretty cool, he's a graphic designer, so, and he also seemed to be a pre presenter of some sort, so I thought, okay, cool, yeah, I'll follow him and he can follow me. It was a year later, in 2016, that um, uh, Giorgio Espen uh, posted a photo of himself in front of three um, paintings that I recognised. And I was raving on about, oh wow, this is brilliant, I love Cat's Eye, I've got all the manga, I've got all the sit on DVDs, they're fantastic, it's excellent. Then I had a message from, uh, uh, from the artist of those paintings, Andrea Prandi, and he wanted to thank me for admiring his work. I said, oh, this is brilliant. It turned out that Andrea was an anime fan like me, and he's also a sci-fi fan, again like me. And uh, he sent me his webpage, and he's heavily into um, all kinds of contemporary art, but especially um, Star Wars and uh, Japanese animation. And uh, we got got talking, and as always, I told him about my illness, and he said, "Oh, actually, I'm about to start a project." So based on people who survived adversity. Would you like to take part? I nonchalantly said, yeah, sure, why not? There were obviously problems because I had no income and um, there's no way I was going to be able to get over to Italy to um, to see Andrea. So he said, don't worry about it, we'll sort something out. In January 2017, Andrea got in touch again and said, Right, I'm going to come to London, um, let's meet up and we can do some filming. And I thought, okay, cool, yeah. Uh, he sent me the details and uh, it, was <laughs> it was on the train to London. I was thinking, what the hell am I doing? I'm, go I'm going to meet up with somebody I've never met before. And uh, I've seen his webpage, um, artcarts.it. And um, I've seen his work and it seems to be... A genuine person but at the end of the day I I don't know there, there was a lot of doubt and I was quite worried that he might be like some sort of strange serial killer 
But um, the fact was that um, the government's no longer helping me, so I have I have to find work or create my own work, and so I'm going to have to take chances. And uh, I also figured that, well, I'm 38 years old. I'm a big chap. If he's going to kill me, it's going to take a lot of killing. So I've, the odds are on my side. When I turned up at the Airbnb that um, he had rented, from the moment that uh, we shook hands for, for the first time, I knew there was something something different. Uh, I knew that this could be a decent opportunity, not just for me to do something worthwhile, but also to make a new friend. And then when I went to, into um, the flat zone they had rented, Andreas um, introduced me to his team. And it was at that point that I realized he had a great expense brought himself his makeup artist, his technical um, director, and his cameraman, all to London for two nights just to meet me. I was I was absolutely blown away by that. Um, it showed the amount of trust that we'd built up over the internet. But also because the the paintings that I saw were um, from a Japanese animation called Cat's Eye, and that's from uh, the nineteen seventies. Most um, anime fans today wouldn't know it but basically bad people don't know cat's eye <laughs> so there, there was that level of trust it was an old school level of trust uh, during the filming Andrea and his team they were perfect hosts <laughs> hosts in my own country and they let me um, uh, take things slowly they let me have um, medication whenever I needed it they always gave me coffee when I, whenever uh, I wanted. They fed me lunch, um, even if even though I didn't really eat lunch. And uh, they were quite frankly just genuine people. I really, really respect them for that. They're so good. Uh, the filming went extraordinarily well. Um, even just looking at the raw footage, I knew they'd made something very, very special. But the whole video that they're making uh, is from 15 volunteers, each telling a separate story of their own. And that's encapsulated in a story about uh, the four seasons of the soul, um, how well, through artis artistic interpretation, the soul passes through um, autumn, winter, spring, and summer. It was at that point, um, Andrea told me that his video is going to be part of a sculpture which is going to be shown at the International Art Festival of Venice and uh, this is one of the biggest art events in the whole art calendar in the art world and it could effectively make or break his career and <laughs> I'm just so relieved that he told me all of this after we had done the filming uh, all of this work was to be done on a voluntary basis. That's uh, the agreement we made over the internet. And when I when I first arrived at the uh, at the Airbnb flat, uh, we um, uh, I signed a contract, basically state, saying that he has all the rights to um, all the videos, all the images, and um, basically I'm not going to be uh, paid for anything. I'm just being a volunteer. I'm happy with that because he's telling my story. A very very short version of my story, but he's telling my story, and it's going to be put up on a international platform for everybody around the world to see. So I'm completely cool with that. However, uh, Andrea was, was obviously not um, too happy about it because, um, uh, as another surprise, he gave me um, a copy of the three paintings that I had seen, which brought which made our encounter possible and those paintings you can now see up here on my wall I mean that they are they are fantastic they're prints on canvas they're properly properly done by professional artist Andrea Prandi Arkart I can't I can't say anything more than how happy I am um, to have these on my wall <laughs>
<laughs> and then there was another bombshell uh, because uh, uh, Andrea said there's a second part of the filming that he wants to do which will be in Ver Verona uh, and because I was a volunteer and I, I didn't have any money because I've got no, no job he was going to pay for my flight and two nights accommodation so I had my trip to Verona all, all that uh, was left to do was to grovel with my family to get a couple of hundred pounds to pay for an extra a few more nights so that I can mosey on around um, Verona city have a look um, also uh, try to find the original letter that I had sent to Juliet so a year late I admit but this is the second part of my letter to Juliet No, 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 we can't play that. This is Verona, the city of love. I'm going to do it properly.
because of my um, uh, brain tumor, multiple brain operations and radiotherapy, I've got a sense of direction worse than James, James May. So uh, I knew from the outset I'm going to need my mobile phone and well I knew that um, roaming charges were going to hit me so um, I found out you could pay British Telecom £30 to not rip you off for 500 gigabytes of data so I was going to use that and use uh, Google Maps to get me around. However, um, a Texan called uh, Gary Hinterlong uh, got in contact with me and told me about um, a, uh, an app called um, GPS My City where you can download um, uh, the, the map of um, Verona and um, the GPS um, signal will follow you around and um, point out where you are. Um, so both of those apps were, well, they became uh, indispensable to me while I was on holiday. I'm afraid the um, video recording uh, is uh, in poor quality because um, I left, quite frankly, I left the um, camera on the wrong setting. So um, that gives me another reason to go back to Verona and get some, get a better footage. But first of all, um, uh, I can talk about uh, this um, hotel which um, Andrea booked me into. Uh, it was the um, Hotel City um, in uh, Via uh, Madoni, Madonia, Via Madonia. Uh, 36 um, in San Giovanni um, and quite frankly it was fantastic um, three star hotel but um, well let me show you this was the room that um, Andrea reserved for me and it was 50 euros a night um, back in April and you can see it's absolutely huge I got a massive double bed and I got my own dressing table and I, I was genuinely astounded by his value for money. You could literally swing a cow in there rather than a cat. Here's the um, dressing table and I want to show you this. Um, here we have the uh, plugs. Now a standard um, European plug has two pins uh, but for some reason uh, the Italian plugs have three pins. I've never seen this before. Last time I came to Italy, they used a standard two pin, and all their appliances, um, the TV and uh, the headrest, they still use two pins. But um, for some reason, uh, the plug sockets seem to have changed to three pins, and it's not the same as the English three pins. So I realised I'm going to have problems um, when I went to meet up with Andrea. So I um, I borrowed one of the adapters and I made sure to return it when I uh, came back. Now, I've got to show you the ensuite shower room. This is brilliant. I mean, it's so fancy. You've got a really nice shower, you've got a lovely basin, and you've got a posh toilet and a posh bidet. Brilliant. But I do question having a marble floor because that coming out of a shower when you're disabled and you've got no balance, that's just a recipe for disaster. Even so, fantastic. I absolutely love this. Now I went to, to um, central Verona and I had to get um, get a bus into town to do so. Uh, the bus um, the bus stop was opposite um, the church, just down the road, about 100, 100 metres from the hotel. And uh, speaking no Italian whatsoever, uh, I just uh, said to the bus driver, uh, Verona, and uh, I gave him five euro notes, and uh, he gave back um, three euros. On the way back, however, um, I tried to pay um, the um, bus driver uh, another two, two, two euros but um, uh, he said uh, no 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 uh, two euros eighty so I think the first bus driver only charged me a child's fare. Now for me personally I have a basic standard when it comes to hotels and it's based on the uh, Japanese business hotel model. In Japan I can get 
a business hotel room for about £50 per night and that's a room to myself plus toilet, bath and shower, uh, a TV, internet and included in the price is breakfast and that's the most important thing to me almost bar none. When my Japanese friends came over um, last year uh, they I went to the Cotswolds and they say that a very expensive, very high class, high um, quality hotel, I'm not going to say which one, uh, because they're in the middle of nowhere and even, even though they paid over £100 each for the utmost luxury, uh, they, uh, that price didn't come with breakfast. And to me that's utterly ridiculous. If you um, stay in London, for example, uh, you'll be lucky to pay £60 per night um, for your own room and that probably won't have breakfast included, but at least in London you can go out and walk 10 minutes down the road and you'll find a supermarket or cafe or somewhere where you can buy food. This isn't going to be much of a warning to uh, you lot coming from a peasant like me, but if there are any uh, hoteliers are listening, I will never stay at a hotel which doesn't have breakfast included in, in the price. Oh, but sir, we have a Michelin star chef in our kitchen. I don't need a Michelin star chef to make toast, thank you. As for the Hotel City Verona Hotel? Ta-da! There you go, this is all you need. Got pastries, you've got eggs, you've got cereals, you've got meats, cheeses, and as a shot, you've got some coffees and uh, fruit juices. If you ask nicely, the staff will even make you a proper cup of um, Italian cappuccino. I mean, if the Italians and the Japanese can do it, why can't we? Well done, Hotel City Verona. I'll definitely be staying with you again. So, um, after San Giovanni, um, working with Andrea, I moved to this uh, bed and breakfast in central Verona. And uh, it was the cheapest one I could find on Expedia.com. And as you can see, the room is quite big. It's got a twin bed, which is a bit, um, a bit of a waste. But, um, like I said, it was the cheapest one I could find. Out here, you've got a nice, nice courtyard. Very, very Italian. It's the sort of thing I like to see. Even if there are cars some um, coming in and out in the morning and some um, in the evening returning. And right. Gotta be quiet because it's still morning. Right, over here we have the um shared kitchen, food Amenities, coffee's free. Got a microwave, 
basic cutlery. Down here you've got loads of um, breakfast snacks and whatever. Uh, the fridge with um, milk and um, juices. Some nice handmade pieces for um, for sale by the looks of things. Right. Basic toilets. Basic shower and bath combination. B day sink. That's pretty much all you need. But I do have another tip for you from the Texan Gary Hinterlong. Uh, he said uh, the uh, Hotel Du Tour um, he stayed at when he went to collect his prize was fantastic. £250 a night and um, the interior and the rooms were spectacular. So a <laughs> sort of place uh, a chavy urchin like me would never get in through the front door. Now, the whole point of me staying an extra three nights in Verona was so that I could uh, meet the Secretary of Juliet and find my original letter. So, allow me to introduce Ellen Marchi in the middle and Giovanna Tamatia um, on the right. Uh, they are the two main secretaries and um, Eleanor is the first person most people speak to when uh, they send an email to the Juliet Club. Uh, Giovanna is the uh, manager, so the boss basically, but both of them are just wonderful people, really really lovely people. It was very special when I first met them, because we had never met before, but we've been talking with each other for over a year and it just felt like we'd known each other forever. It was a very special moment, like with Andrea. Um, it was one of those moments when I just felt, this is where I'm supposed to be. This is right. And it was just so comforting. Um, I just felt so safe and so, uh, just so reassured. But first of all, to find my letter, we had to look on the secret um, Juliet Club um, database. So Eleanor typed that up and uh, it brought up all various numbers, all in code obviously, and uh, we tracked down uh, which box and which uh, number uh, my letter would be. Once we had the correct information, we had to go to the top secret Juliet storage facility. You have to come out of the Juliet club, go to the end of the courtyard, turn right. After that, you have to continue down the street uh, for an unspecified amount of time until you get to this street. Here you must turn right. At this point, you need to weave around the back streets for about 9 minutes until you find a glass door with a metal frame. You knock 4 times and then a small hatch will open up. You must whisper the secret password to gain entry into the next room. There, you will find an old man dressed in rags to whom you must give 4 gold coins. Once you've done that, you'll gain entry into the secret courtyard where you'll find Juliet's secret storage facility. In fact, I'm always, I'm always surprised that people write so much about themselves and they send it over not knowing who's going to read it. Exactly. Them. And I say, wow, it's an amazing act of trust to me. <laughs> Absolutely. Street. It's a nice place here. It is, very, very nice. Probably there is no toilet. <laughs> ah. The other one is okay because people come in. This one is okay because people don't come in. Yeah. Other one is okay because... All the white boxes you see behind me contain letters sent to Juliet after 1992. That's when the Juliet Club started archiving everything they received. All the letters sent to her from the early 1900s until then were sadly lost, but the replies from Juliet must still exist somewhere, and that makes them real treasures. I'd like to say that I sat there for hours on end reading through the thousands of letters, but we knew which box my letter was in, and what number it was, so 
I just read through some of the letters and then I found it. I can't tell you how that felt. It's completely irrational. But it just felt so special. And for the first time in history, a letter sent to Juliet and for a reply that Juliet sent out had been re reunited. This was a moment of history for no one other than myself. But there was one more photograph I had to take. Beautiful things are coming my way Beautiful things, I want them to stay But after a while, my beautiful things Don't seem beautiful